That's no more. That's an asshole. It wasn't a phase. back to another episode of the Senior Citizen Podcast, and we are here with Hanging Witch. Hanging Witch. That was a little devious there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Amazing. Great. Awesome, yeah. They couldn't nice. hear you, but you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing amazing. I'm glad to hear it. Um... Okay, so I want to hear a little bit about how, and I start off with fans mostly hearing how they got started. Like, what? who started Hanging Witch? Are they still here? Are we keeping their legacy going? Um, all right. So Hanging Witch kind of started with uh, me, Joel, and Ryan. Uh, this is Giuliano, by the way, the drummer. And this is Josh, who's going to be our new guitarist. Um, so anyway, we were in a previous band. Things kind of didn't work out with that band. Ryan got kicked out. And then... Uh, Why did he get kicked out? I want the drama. <laughs> <laughs> It really, it had like nothing. Oh, my fault, my fault. <laughs> it had like nothing to do with the band, actually. It was more like, what would you say, like some personal stuff between me and the drummer, I it guess. Was like, it was like indirect personal stuff. Yeah. Did it get catty? Kinda, yeah, yeah. A little bit. It was. It was a little catty, yeah. I guess. I just don't like to talk smack about it, so I usually skip that whole part of the story and just like. You can give me like a brief with no names, you know? All right. Well. <laughs> My okay, basically the the drummer was living with my cousin for some time, and then like, you know, my uncle gave him a job and stuff, and he had like a good opportunity, and then he just kind of blew it, so he got kicked out. But because I was related to my cousin, and he was like upset about getting kicked out, he just like indirectly had beef with me because of that. So then he decided to kick me out, and then I was kind of like, yo. You could explain it from there. <laughs> Basically, from there, I was still kind of in the band, and I was like, damn, we got a drummer who doesn't have drums. Because that was, like, another thing of the story. Like, he didn't have drums anymore. <laughs> so, like, we would be practicing, and he would, like, have bongos and stuff. But whatever. Um, I love it. Then, Might as well whip out a ukulele, too, and <laughs> instead of, like, yeah, a guitar. A tuba, a tuba. He, yeah, he even <laughs> had plans for a tuba, too. It was, it was interesting. Wow. But basically... Ryan just kind of hit me up or like he hit me up through his cousin out of the blue and she was like oh Ryan still wants to make music and all that stuff and like he knows you're still in this band so like he doesn't want to like you know you know mess anything up or whatever and I was like nah it's it's okay like don't right. worry about it we'll, we'll you know do our grudges. thing <laughs> yeah because uh I, I always feel like I connected with Ryan the most out of the band we always had like a cool chemistry so just kind of out of that I was like yeah let's just do it mm. um from there we kind of just started off and then we needed a drummer obviously i wasn't supposed to be the vocalist originally so that was something for later but yeah finding a drummer was also interesting because like there's a lot of drummers that don't have drum sets which is something i've noticed that's pretty frequent if you would like to donate a drum set to your lyric vocal <laughs> band <laughs> you can hit us up at the side dress yeah <laughs> like uh, we we kind of started with instagram you like you know a little poster on instagram and the drummers would hit us up and like, yeah, but do you have like a drum set? I'm like, no, I'm not a drummer. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Did you bring your own drum set? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. So basically, you know, I never saw the Instagram posts, but I saw they put a flyer at FIU. And, you know, I didn't, I never saw it, but my girlfriend passed by it. And she like a few days went after seeing the flyer. And we were passing by, and she's like, oh, by the way, there, there's, like, a poster looking for a drum set player. And I go look at it. And I'm like, okay. Drummer wanted. All the bands that they were saying that they wanted the sound of were, like, bands that I really liked. And I was just like, fuck, how long was, has this been here? And she was like, oh, like, three days, but I think it'll be okay. I was like, oh, but they could have found someone, because you mm. never know. No. And then, yeah. <laughs> so, and I hit them up, and, you know, we were going to, you know, for me, it's just, like, I used to do things like more like more independent stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I made sure that before like I took like I took my stuff out into the public where like, you know, I offered myself to play in services with, you know, with drumming that I had my own drum set that held me on. I had my own place where I could like play and not get the cops called on me. Like 
I really made sure, like, I, you know, I really made sure all my things were, I got all my shit together before I went to go be like, hey, let me be your drummer. And mm. I don't have, like, sticks or if I don't I, have anything for it. You would have at least given them sticks, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> if I had to buy them, sure. I wouldn't mind buying sticks. Yeah. And so, you know, I hit him up and we were going to go to, was it your cousin's house? My grandparents' house. Your, yeah. His grandparents' house. I came with a whole, I came with my whole drum set, with my, all my sticks, everything complete, everything set up. And we got there, and then what? And then basically, the reoccurring problem we had was cops getting called on us. Metal. We started pra- mm-hmm. we started practicing at my house. We had like a couple noise complaints, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna find your mom, whatever, whatever." And I was like, "All right, fuck it, we'll go somewhere else." Mm-hmm. We started practicing at North Trail Park for a little while too, and then one time we had the power cut off. <laughs> yeah, and then um, when we were gonna audition Giuliano that day at his uh, grandparents' house. We were only practicing for like 10 minutes, I think. No, I had like- not even. We were just setting up. Yeah, and I just plugged in my bass. Probably and I was just, just sound like, checking, yeah. Yeah, I was just fiddling around and then like immediately a cop pulls up and he's like, oh yeah, we had like a noise disturbance, whatever. And I was like, fuck dude. <laughs> like the drummer's what, what gonna get here. What was the disturbance, here. dude? <laughs> like, it, was, it was just the bass, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. then like, the worst thing is, like, the drummer's about to pull up, which just makes things, like, ten times worse. Right. Wise. Yeah. I got there, and they're like, all right, so the cops got called on us, and we can't play. And I was like, I mean, I have my house. And I have, like, a little studio in my house that we could go to, and it's, like, 20 minutes away. 20, 30 minutes away. And we went there, and, like, now that's our, that's, like, our... Our hub. Your you little know? practice spot. Got yeah. yeah, our practice spot. You know, like, I, I soundproofed it. I, you know, made sure that everything was good. I made it look nice. And so they were like, what the fuck? And I don't have one drum set. I have two drum Look sets. at that. Yeah. So <laughs> I have so one. So if, if you leave, you can donate one. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> their next right? Yeah, no, so I have, my, I have like, my, my studio one for, like, recording and stuff. And then I have my gigging drum set. But right. that gigging drum set was more for, like, jazz. Now I am, like modifying it and stuff like changing some drums around and stuff gotcha so you're into all genres basically yeah, yeah. Jazz. I, I mean what's your background How do you um, get into drumming so when it comes to drumming um in high school i did band you know i did marching band so i did you know i played snare drum tenors for drum line um i marched drum corps which is like you know basically like not like independent marching band you know where you like tour like around the country or whatever and you mm-hmm. play and so I made my uh, sure, especially because in Miami, it you know I didn't even know a hardcore scene or like a metal scene or a scene anywhere near this type of music was like here until I met them. Yeah, he knows. Sure. And yeah, I made sure that I tried to be like a jack of all trades, where like you know if they needed me to go play lion music, I'd go play. I'd I'd know how to play lion music. If they needed me for jazz, I'd play jazz. Lion music is big right now. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people at Roundup. Especially yeah, especially like in 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 Miami. You know every you know if I needed you know I I would play drums for for like rappers or, um, what was another one? One time I had to play uh, at a church, so it's just like whatever I needed to do or whatever I needed to play, at least I needed to have that down so yeah so ma- uh what, what's it called jack of all trades it's like jack yeah. of all trades master of none yeah master of none yeah <laughs> the drum motion yeah so it, it was very nice especially to meet people that like like the type of that type of music and that i could actually start playing the music that i wanted to right so as a teen you were never like into the hardcore scene or any kind of that stuff. i mean i always was into i mean i've always loved the music i mean right. I, I mean not so much hardcore specifically but like you know for me it was just like i mean the all the cores death core <laughs> metal core metal just like all that type of stuff i was into and so but you know never a lot of people even my friend group i was like the only person they were like oh yeah he listens to like the vomit music and i was like yep that's me <laughs> so damn, damn. I, I feel that i had a similar background like i didn't have a lot of friends that were into the same kind of music and whatnot so it's cool finding people who actually do vibe to it yeah yeah um i've had a back-to-back incidents now of accidental vocalist so i would like to hear how that happened <laughs> oh yeah so basically i wasn't okay i guess i have to start with like my bad. All right. No, you're All right. good. So um, I basically started doing vocals or like whatever 
back in high school, I think. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I always used to be into like writing music and all that stuff, but like I used to rap and like kind of do like that melody rap type of stuff. After a while, it kind of wasn't me though. I was just like talking about like cars I don't have, money I don't have, girls I don't have. And I was just like, <laughs> what am I doing? You know what I mean? Like, like it sounds cool, you know, like it flows on the beat, but it's just like, it's not me. Right. So like, I kind of took a break from music, a whole kind of stuff, like a whole bunch of stuff just kind of happened in life. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick up the bass. So I kind of just stopped with like vocals for a while. I was just like, let me get really good at bass. I uh, played it for like a year or two. Well, I'm, I'm like playing it for like two years now. And um, yeah, we basically got the whole band formed and we were looking for a vocalist. We started auditioning a few people, but it was just like a case of like, one could scream but one couldn't sing, one could sing, but one couldn't scream. And it was just like, vocalists were also very hard to find as well. They didn't have their own vocal cords? <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, basically the the other thing was like, I kind of wrote the music, as, not the music, like the lyrics. Mm -hmm. So kind of like writing them, you have your voice and in the lyrics. And you know how it's supposed to sound in yeah, your head. Yeah, and I know how yeah. it's supposed to sound. I know it's how, how it's supposed to be structured. Like I had one guy that was just like, oh, what if we, I just, like, throw the lyrics around, like, wherever in the song? And I was like... No. Like, what? <laughs> like, it doesn't... That's not how it works. And I was or like, they let's, did let's, it off beat. Like, yeah, I was mm. like, let's let's try it out anyway. Let me entertain the thought. Right. We start playing, and he's like, we're in the middle of the breakdown, and he's, like, doing the hook. And I'm like, no, dude, like, that's not a good it's idea. It's like a weird way of playing, like, Mad Libs or some shit. That's the vibe yeah. I'm getting. <laughs> it's just, like, kind of throw in whatever and see if it fits. Right. Um. But, yeah, so after a while, it was just, like... We were basically ready to play. We mm -hmm. were just missing a vocalist. And I was just like, you know what? Let me just do it myself. You know, like I have background experience singing and whatever. I just kind of had to learn how to scream right. and learn how to uh, sing and play at the same time. Because that was another right. struggle. That's yeah. hard. Yeah, no, but that's really cool, though. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations you. on all you guys getting together and, you know, making Hanging Witch happen. Oh, yeah. Um, the whole rapping about things that, that you like didn't own the cars yeah. and stuff it just reminded <laughs> me of this of this tiktok i saw earlier where this girl she goes up to her her husband while he's gaming and she's like i'm gonna see if he's listening to me and she runs up and she's like hey can i can i call the cops on the crickets that are hanging out in the backyard and the guy's just like yeah yeah okay and he's like back to his game <laughs> she's completely focused <laughs> right <laughs> but anyways josh you've recently joined the band yeah. And I want to hear a little bit about your experience, the vibe. Feel free to talk shit if you don't like them. <laughs> I hate you guys. Um, <laughs> um, it basically started out um, on an Instagram post I saw from a lead singer from a familiar band called Scarlet Hearts. Uh, thank you, Joan. Uh, I saw that Instagram post and immediately I was like, yo, I can play. And like the same day... <laughs> uh, uh, they responded to me and I just when I once I saw that I was like I gotta send videos like immediately because they, they said oh send videos of your playing uh, these are the requirements and stuff send feet and pics <laughs> 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 um, yeah um, basically it was like the same day where I like got up I was at my girlfriend's uh, house at the time and her brother had a guitar and uh, I brought my amp too because we were gonna I was gonna teach her how to play bass so it was kind of like perfect timing. And like once I got the DMO send videos, I just started playing random shit and I sent it them. I sent I sent it to them. And I also sent them like a bunch of videos of like previous times I played online. I posted that. I used to be like an Instagram guitarist, like wanted to have, to have the Instagram clout. Yeah. So basically that's no. how, that's how, how famous I, are you? <laughs> uh, I got 70 followers. <laughs> oh yeah. You missed the K, right? You forgot to say the K. <laughs> <laughs> no, we on the way up. We on the way up. We getting big. So basically, yeah, that's how I uh, got into the whole band. And the chemistry just worked between it, all you guys. It pretty much worked, yeah. I got really, uh, like, the first time I met for our auditions, um, it went really well. I found these guys, like, yeah. super awesome to talk to. We like the same band's interest. And I really fucked with the music. I fucked with the music hard. Good shit. It's good shit. Yeah, it's worth also mentioning that, like, you know, for a band, you know, of course there's that professional setting where it's like, you know, you're there to work, get the shit done, and, you know, play well. But at the same time, you also want to make sure that that chemistry where it's like, you want to kind of develop a friendship. It wants to be someone that it's not just there just because, you know, it's just there to play. Right. Someone where you can also hang out with when you're not doing the mu when you're not doing music. 
And I feel like creating that friendship or being able to create that friendship also helps with creating a like a better product, you know, like right. better Business. music, better, yeah. You know? Yeah, because the energy is a little better and everything. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, one of the questions that we asked him was like, if you were presented with an opportunity to play with a band that was bigger, what would you do put in that situation? Like, how committed would you be to a band? You know, right. like, is it like, are you in a band just because you're waiting for the next opportunity to go up? Or are you in a band because you want, you like a vision or you want to find a common vision and try to create something of your own? like with other people you know you i know? never really thought about it like that that's a really good question mm-hmm. not that i'm forming a band any day now but <laughs> <laughs> no, no yeah my that... man my man came up with like interview style questions i was like holy yeah, shit yeah he's giving boss energy <laughs> like managing level <laughs> yeah no i mean it's just because like i said i did a lot i did drum corps and you know those auditions were very rigorous where you know you'd for example one one of the one of the auditions i went to do i went all the way to california flew to california and there's six other drummers from different parts of the country, and they are all given a list of the things you need to do. And when you get interviewed, they ask you, like, you know, a lot of times they would ask you super philosophical questions or whatever, just to kind of get an idea of, like, the personality or, like, who you will be in the group. Right. Not who you are now, but, like, who you will be potentially in the future. And so a lot of these questions are, are I, I realize, you know, like they're essential. You have to ask these things because you kind of get an idea of what, like I said, who they will be once they're in the band Makes sense. or in a group. Yeah, I like that. And before we get into the meaning of life over here, I don't want to ignore Ryan any <laughs> longer. Poor guy's over here. Tell me about your musical background beginnings and about not catfight, bet- including your cousin and stuff, you know? So my musical background, I actually attribute a lot of the music that I listen to uh, because of my cousin, the same one who uh, kind of got me kicked out of the last band, but I still love her. Uh, Cousins are Miranda. just messy. Shout out Miranda. We could name her. She's cool. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, so when I was, like, really young in elementary school, she kind of put me onto like, the old emo music. So, like, I started listening to, like, Asking Alexandria, Blackville Brides, Sleeping With Sirens. Those are the then, scene bands. Yeah, like the scene bands. Like, the yeah. old, like the it's okay, old, like, dude, you're on the bands. Senior Citizen podcast. That's yeah. the point. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I listen to. <laughs> I love it. So I kind of started listening to that, and then over time, it, it just kind of progressed into all the other beautiful subgenres of like hardcore and deathcore is my personal favorite like old my myspace bands like a uh, what like chelsea grin suicide chelsea grin. silence yeah. like all those bands the I just, core multiverse, the core, that yeah, is the <laughs> core multiverse. but yeah mm-hmm. so that's kind of what got me started i've been playing guitar from a young age my parents put me in like lessons when i was really young so um yeah i just kind of i don't know i just i just thought it would be a lot of fun to play and uh, i've enjoyed it so it's really cool no, I'm glad. You don't know how many people I've had here that, you know, they come in and I'm like, so tell me about your musical background. And they're like, yeah, when I was five, they played me Slipknot and and I grew up on that. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> when I was five, I was listening to whatever was on Power 96. Yeah, for um, sure. Right. And then as I grew up, probably some more like reggaeton and old school Spanish pop. Right. Okay. And then I jumped into Bla- Black Veil Brides. Knives and Pens was the first like song that dove me into into that scene into that genre. actually actually me too i think that song was same iconic yeah same. on mm. youtube youtube was great at the time yeah. especially because the algorithm was it was weird it just mm-hmm. was it it just hit like the right notes in terms of the content that i would get where also vine helped a lot you know like there's some viners that would put clips of like breakdowns for metal for metalcore or like deathcore bands. Yeah. And then you go to the comments, what bands are those? And that's where I would find that's how I kinda skipped the, the scene phase storm. of right. like metal and kinda just <laughs> jump from jump I jump from like Slipknot to like Thy Art is Murder and between you know, all like those heavier bands. So Right. Yeah. No, I think it was always, I had a friend that it was always like a competition of whoever would listen to anything heavier, but in reality, in the background, I was like, I would love the more poppy shit. Like, even now and day, nowadays, I think I like more pop punk bands than I like like metal stuff, really. Mm. Right. But um, everybody has their own like journey through these subgenres, and yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. I only have, I have a, I only have so much tolerance for like listening to metal. I can only listen to metal for so long before I have to like listen to something else. Yeah. But then I, I like your like, words. <laughs> Yeah, or like I'll listen to rap for a bit and then I'm like, all right, that's too much. Let me switch to like EDM. Okay, that's okay. Like it's just try to mix it because sometimes it does get like 
boring or it repetitive. Not yeah, boring. yeah. It gets to be a lot. Yeah. Um, that's why I really appreciate, and I just mentioned this in the last interview too, but the Spotify mixes, I'm living for them. Like, it's no longer like, um, I, you know, I think I listen to the romantic mix a little too often, and it, it even segs the songs perfectly. Spotify has like the best recommendations yes. ever. Like, yeah. anyone that uses like Apple Music, I'm sorry. Like, like, you you have to stop sending lyrics. I'm sorry. There was a tweet that was like, "Oh, y'all don't know that Apple Music is better until you use it," and I I don't believe it. Yeah, I, don't I mean, the, the new Spotify update, I think, is making me consider Apple Music. It is very bad. The, they changed the dashboard to make it look more like TikTok. So like you know, it's happened where I just open up Spotify by mistake, and I'm like in class or I'm somewhere where I shouldn't, you know, at a doctor's appointment, and it just automatically plays the music. Or as if it, yeah, like <laughs> all of a sudden just yeet gets on like my play, <laughs> I'm like at the doctor's appointment at nine in the morning. I'm like, all right, all right. It, it's it's really bad. I don't know. If they're not getting lit, you need another doctor then. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. It's just, I don't know what they did. I think some, it, they're like trying to revert it. I don't know. But. I saw that, but it hasn't done anything like that for me. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I, I at least the dashboard, because before you could just, you know, you saw, like, for example, the romantic playlist. Yeah. You'd click on romantic playlist. You had all the songs. Now they show you like. The, the the cinematics or like the the, mm -hmm. the art and the song will play for like a certain amount of time showing you the art like in your face like covering the whole screen and then you had to click on it and then but clicking on it wouldn't necessarily open up the playlist it just skipped to another scene another song with another like art thing it, it's weird i don't know I guess yeah. I'm not going to be updating my app. Yeah, anytime yeah don't, soon. don't, don't, don't. <laughs> For anybody that like has Spotify and it looks like how it does, don't update it. Avoid it. I don't update okay. shit anyway, dude. So yeah. It does it fine. on its own. <laughs> like, I, I've never updated anything. Oh, Unless yeah. it starts crashing, that's when I start looking for updates. Mm. Um, but, anyways, I have a, a fun little question to see who would win. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh oh. Shit. <laughs> What's the weakest character that can survive eating an entire brick of cocaine in 10 minutes? The weakest character? Yes. So this brick, this would be the brick of cocaine we see in Cocaine Bear. Mm -hmm. The the Cocaine Bear eat in one of the trailers. I haven't seen the trailer, but it seemed like a good post. Who's the weakest character that could eat the brick in one short sitting and survive? They have 10 minutes to consume the entire brick, so it has to be someone capable of that too. Not just someone who can survive that much cocaine. <laughs> like this is any character from like any anything, any show, movie. I thought we met someone in the band. Oh, oops. <laughs> Y'all were looking at. First me. of all, then you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I was, I was like, wait. Uh, I mean, like right. if you have to vote one off the island. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> That's fucked up. Anyways, <laughs> what character from any universe, any series? The first comment says Osby Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne, I could see that happening. Yeah, that's though. a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I could yeah. See that. But the weakest character. So it's like you can't. That's go, what makes it you interesting. Can't you can't see someone like Baki or something. Yeah, no. I think Morty, bro. Morty. Yeah. From Rick and Morty. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first person that came up. Like I think him. Pickle Rick. <laughs> yeah. No. He's built weak, but they always put him through shit. Damn, that's this really has my. Damn. This really has my gears like. Turning. Turn, yeah, bro. What about you, Josh? What do you think? I agree with Morty. I I mean, they put Morty through a lot. I'm not personally. I'm not really a Rick and Morty fan. So no, me neither. It's I'm, just the I'm one. Personally, that I'm personally yeah, happy yeah. he would take the, the brick of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> maybe like maybe like Bart Simpson. <laughs> 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 right. Bart might be able to handle it. He might. Yeah, you Kenny. Think so? Kenny. Oh, You're Kenny! Oh, no, Kenny. Kenny would die. No, Kenny would no die the point is, Kenny would die. Kenny dies yeah. all the no, time. Be. Yeah. Dang. Damn. These are all kids too. Like, That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top terrible. of it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. St regardless, I'm, I'm still sticking yeah. with Maureen. For me, since I just finished, um, I don't know if you guys like anime, but I just finished a uh, Cyber Runner last night. Oh, the cyberpunk one? Cyberpunk. Cyber yeah. The edge Runners. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Edge Runners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for me, it's David, but at the beginning of the series. <laughs> Not before he gets oh. all jacked up. Yeah, when oh, he's yeah. weak. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt that. That show is so good because, like, the portrayal of, like, the uh, the cybernetics and all that stuff, it almost reminded me of, like, steroids and, like, this whole steroid culture was just, like, 
I need more. I gotta get bigger. I yeah, yeah. Get, it, like, it was a mix of like steroids <laughs> and drugs. Because yeah. Because these people lose their freaking minds. No, it's like, like it's a it, yeah. At the end of the day, you get addicted to like the the upgrade and like yeah, just, like, yeah. Getting bigger. It's yeah. Crazy. So so much was done in ten episodes. I was just dis- disappointed because I feel the like they could have fleshed it out. Yeah. There was more to flesh out there when they flesh out series that don't have more to it. Yeah, it's like two episodes ago we were like having so much fun and then everyone's dead. <laughs> spoiler <laughs> alert! If you're watching it, yeah. everyone oh, dies. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Just gotta put like a little spoiler alert warning. <laughs> My boyfriend yeah. literally spoiled it for me while we were watching. He's like, you know, everybody dies at the end of this, and I was like, why would you tell me that? <laughs> yeah. No, th- wow. I actually I hate when people do that when yeah. they spoil, and here I was with Instagram and Twitter and everything like. Just about everything I watch is just spoiled already, so I'm just like... Yeah, I try not to read too much until I, I finish kinda, series. It kind of makes things interesting, though, because then it's like, let me see how it gets there, then. Yeah, I'll you still know? watch it, but it's still that kind of like... Yeah. And we're watching, he's like, everybody dies, and I'm like, even Kiwi? Even even Rebecca? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, and I'm like, okay, how many episodes is it? He's like, eight, and I'm like, it's not eight, it's ten. <laughs> <laughs> we finished episode eight, I'm like, everyone's alive. <laughs> yeah, that's literally how it goes, it's like... You're so happy, and then two episodes later, it's just like you're devastated. Well, you're ep- you're happy for like one episode, and then his mom dies, and you're like, yeah, what? yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, things are getting good, and then nope, yeah, and then back, and then no. No, I, I watched it literally for the art, um, because I, I happened to see it at a bar, like they were playing it, and I was like, what is that? My boyfriend was like, that's that's a cyber whatever. Yeah, <laughs> Can't remember had, they played at a bar. Uh, I yeah, yeah, the they were at Black Flamingo oh. Brewing. It was just hanging up on one of the TVs. They were, pay- I mean, it was like that, and then like those cute like YouTube animal videos that like just wow, you know, what a go through. contrast. And there was a show going on. Mm. <laughs> I think they just had like a random playlist of just random stuff. There was something <laughs> going on. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I had uh, I had played the game originally, and like when I saw the show, they really like. How does the game compare the to the game. show? Like, how, what's the gameplay like? I was curious. It depends when you ask and who you ask okay. and yeah. when they played it okay because when the f- game first came out it was super broken like super buggy super glitchy like the frame rates would drop like every second i still kind of just like persevered through it and still enjoyed the game but like most people kind of didn't i couldn't i was hyped for seven years for that game to come out yeah. the developers <laughs> made you know there's the other another netflix series called the witcher mm-hmm. they developed the games for that series as yeah. well and for me it's like my favorite series in terms of for me dark fantasy is my thing i love that but then just the witcher favorite game series and so for them to be making cyberpunk i was super excited and you know like i said seven years in the making or whatever not more but all of the hype all of that and then it comes out and it's just so disappointing <laughs> even though i watched edge runners and i and i really really liked it it just hurt because I was like, damn, this the game never reached the the potential that was hyped and marketed as. And it, yeah, so. Yeah. And I mean, they f- they they kind of fixed it, but like almost like a year later type of thing. And like that's kind of the problem with the gaming industry now. They kind of just they throw, release things in the yeah, dark and then they, they release, fix it later. Yeah, yeah. Now, now instead of releasing like a finished product, like before you'd get like the disc and like that cool little menu paper with like cool little like pictures and all that stuff yeah, yeah. and like you know game releases used to be a big thing people would like camp outside and all that stuff and now it's just midnight like, release for halo reach oh it came out let me just download it and like now when you download the game you have to wait like a few months for like the game to actually be fixed yeah yeah i've noticed i'm that. calling out you gaming industries you gotta fix your shit or i'm coming for you yeah it's tough <laughs> that was a very serious threat. And I'm, I'm just going to end it off there, give you guys the opportunity to do a shameless plug, anything you want to promote, talk about, let people know. This is your opportunity. Um, we've got a lot of cool stuff going on. We know we've kind of been a little in the dark as of late. Yeah, the transition between guitarists has kind of, you know, it's been a curveball, but it's it was, you know, something nice to be able to go through and relatively quickly. And, of course, you know, the reason why Ryan is, you know, here still is just the other thing is when you're leaving a band, the best thing you can do is the idea of, like, I'm leaving, but I don't want to leave you guys hanging. 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 Which, <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> and, you know, he has been there the whole process. You know, he was there at the auditions, teaching people, teaching the parts, 
Um, you know, now for, for Josh now, as he's picking things up, he comes to the rehearsals, makes sure everything's good, sends recordings, everything needed for us to continue being successful and just continue where we left off from him leaving. But yeah, so we got we got a lot of stuff now. We got shirts are coming. We got some shirts coming yeah. out. We got a really, really, really dope design that we think everyone in the scene is going to fuck with. And like not even everyone in the scene. I think like people are just going to see that shirt. Like outside the scene, they can be like, "Oh fuck, what is that?" That's, like, that's <laughs> a good shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we also have our song "Fuck You." It's going to be coming out soon. We don't have a date yet. All that stuff still being figured out, but in these coming months, it should be out soon with a music video. Um, and we're also going to start hosting shows. Yeah, that's another thing that we kind of want to bring up. That's going to be a little more not in the near future, but like as things get rolling, but. Yeah, we come back strong, baby. Of course, we want to make sure. We also we want to expand the scene more. We want to yeah. help out, contribute. Most definitely. So I love it. We'll be here to support in any way we can, and hopefully this won't be the last time you guys are on the Senior Citizen Podcast. Great. Hell yeah. Of course, we'd love to be back. It was an honor being here. Yeah, thank you so much. Fun.